What's going on YouTube? It's VCTRFS and today let's talk about owning a card shop and the series I'm going to create right now is so you want to own a card shop and I think it's a really good question. A lot of people think they want to own a card shop. A lot of people feel, hey, I could do what that card shop owner is doing but they don't realize everything that goes into it. They don't realize the work you have to put into owning a card shop because and when and the mind goes, look, he's, the owner sitting down playing games. I could do that and I get paid for that. I should own a card store. You don't realize that it's not easy as people might think it is. I almost at almost every customer that's came into book my card shop has asked me if I'm hiring. And I and it's always I always ask them the same amount of questions and they always fail these questions. I mean actually these questions. And you're sitting at home and you can answer these questions properly, then maybe you might want to start working into opening a card shop. Or maybe even work for a card shop, which I did when I was 16. I worked for a card shop and so I knew what I wanted. Question number one. Do you play Yu-Gi-Oh? Since my card holds Yu-Gi-Oh, do you play Yu-Gi-Oh? And not like, yeah, my dragon deck. No, do you fucking know Yu-Gi-Oh? Do you know the meta? Do you know what to buy? Do you know what to sell? Do you know your shit? If you want to own a card shop, you have to know Yu-Gi-Oh. It's one of the hottest games. Question number two. Do you know magic? See what I did there? I just, I basically asked water if I knew about oil and oil if I knew about water. Most Yu-Gi-Oh players don't play magic. Most magic players don't play Yu-Gi-Oh. <coughs> a good card owner will either hire someone that knows one of each. But if you're starting as a car shop owner, you're probably not going to have the ability to hire people. So in that case, you have to know these things. Now, when I first came down here to Kentucky, I knew almost nothing about magic. I knew a little bit about it. I drafted it, but I wasn't you know, into it huge. I wasn't into it huge. I wasn't crazy about magic. I didn't know about the meta. I didn't know about what decks were, what cards were money. I just didn't know because I didn't care, to be honest with you. Because I only, only want to do Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is my game. That Yu-Gi-Oh is my shit. Fuck everybody else. I know how to play your game, I just don't like your game. That's how I felt like. And realistically speaking, I didn't know that much about magic. I like and I'm and now, you know, here's how I feel about with Yu-Gi-Oh. With Yu-Gi-Oh is you don't care about the crowd, you care about the game, you enjoy the game. As a Yu-Gi-Oh player, that's how I feel. I enjoy the game as Yu-Gi-Oh, and I can play with any crowd. And if there's a crowd I don't like, I could go fuck you guys, I'll play with home by myself, or eventually I'll go out to a Yu-Gi-Oh event. Magic, for me, I always find that if you get a good crowd of Magic players, you will enjoy Magic. And if you guys right now say, oh, I hate those Magic players in my card shop, well, that's the reason why you probably might not enjoy Magic, but I guarantee you, if you went to another card shop, you would. And and that's another question I'll ask somebody. Do you know Magic? Do you know Modern? Do you know Standard? Do you know EDH? Do you know Papa? Do you know the cards? Do you know the cards that are that are hit on the reserve list? Do you know the pricings? Because this is very important. Do you go by Star City Games? Do you go by TCG Player? My, my, for me, some some stores might have a different answer. For my for my answer, it would be TCG Player. I like TCG Player. It's a lot easier. And do you know how to buy cards? Have you ever had card? Uh, have you have you ever worked at a card shop before? Because once again, it ain't like yeah, I just hang me at a counter every now and then. I'll just go and sit down and play a couple of card games. No, no, no. When you work for a card store, or if you, like I said, you want to own a card store, you're rarely gonna play trading card games. It's a big illusion here, guys. You see, you gotta create an atmosphere for people to come relax and enjoy playing a trading card game at this uh, card store that you created, but you're not gonna play that much. It's so creepy. My door is slowly opening. My door is slowly opening my fucking house. Dude, it's 9 in the morning. Why is this happening now? Anyway, sorry about that, guys. So, you're not gonna be able to play trading card games it's just it's just not gonna happen it's just not in the works i i rarely play in tournaments i hold really realize this guys because if you're a magic player and you love playing magic you're not gonna play as much magic so pre-releases yeah you know you're missing those pre-releases some stores get 36 some stores get 72 some stores get more on pre-release kits you're not gonna have any of those kits if they sell out store will always take priority over you as a person as a player think of it that way that's for magic and anything new comes out with Yu-Gi-Oh, same scenario Presence over a person or over what you want. So that happens. Now you go, okay, I could do that. You say, I know magic, I know Yu-Gi-Oh. Great. What's your initial investment? How much you're gonna initially walk in the door when you want to do it? Because if you want to get a loan from the bank, you could stop this video right now. You're not it's not working. Unless you're just a master, a beast at just investing your money and making good money. And I'm dead serious, even then it's not even that well, it's not gonna happen. It's, it's just not gonna happen. 90% of all stores and all businesses for the most part fail within the first one to two years. Most car stores do it within one year, guys. So if you think that you're gonna get a, a loan and you're gonna pay the loan back by paying the store back and trying to support yourself on that money, it's not happening. Stop it. You have to come in with your own capital. Now, there's a lot of talk about what's, what's a good initial investment. My initial investment was about $20,000. It was 
horrible. I had 15,000 in cash. I had 5,000 and everything else. Opened my store up with that. It was not a good idea, but I, I worked with it and actually did work for a while. Uh, and, I was, and I was gaining capital as I was going. See, I was at the money I was getting, I was, besides paying the bills, I was going right back into the business. I wasn't getting a new iPhone, even though I love Apple technology and new iPads. That came way later. Also, for me personally, I have a sex side business in which I work online. I build and create websites, so I make a lot of money doing that. Anyone hear that, too? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Listen, it's not easy as you guys think it is, and it's really hard. As a casual owner, you're not going to play much card games. You're really going to test. It just is what it is. It just is what it is, my friends. Now, looking into that, if you if you could just put all that to the side and go, I could still, I, I still want this. That's fine. You have to learn standard and modern from Magic the Gathering. If you, this is, most of my guys from watching this video is Yu-Gi-Oh players. You're going to have to learn standard. And you're going to have to learn modern. You're going to have to watch the Pro Tour for, st for, uh, for Magic the Gathering's uh, thing. And you have to understand what the fuck they're talking about. Because if you don't, and people walk into your shop, Magic players are not like Yu-Gi-Oh players. Magic players love babbling. And babbling equals finance. They love going, oh, I'm doing, I'm working on my Titan Shift deck. I'm working, I'm working on all this stuff. And you go, cool, you need Scape Shift, which is pretty expensive card i see that you only have two i have two in the showcase just want to give you the heads up guy you know people walk into your store hey do you have any stuff for dredge if you instantly know what dredge is you gotta start learning your stuff because you gotta learn now if you want to open a card show don't make my mistake learn everything now magic gathering Yu-Gi-Oh, pokemon it's not a beast to talk about you have to learn it now. Are you gonna do board games? Board games are a whole lot of beast you gotta do and my little my little tip for board games is play test all the board games that you like the ones you like, you, you, you keep them and you put them up for sale, you know, that you can sell. The ones you don't like or don't know much about, once again, I wouldn't do it. It, it. That's a personal preference, but I know some stores do it differently. They get the top 10 and just slap it in the shelves. That's how you want to do it. Now, when creating a, creating a store, you want to have your store, you want to fill the store with nice shit. And a lot of stores look just, it's filled with stuff. Filled with product, filled with product, filled with product. The issue is, if you're doing your initial store, you gotta realize what product not you're gonna like, what the customers gonna like. So here's what I like to do when I do, when I come out to break certain things down. I'll go right up the gate, right up the back, and go hit you up with a couple of things. Sleeves. Here's my idea with sleeves. I like KMCs, um, Ultra Pros, uh, Ultimate Guards, and there's another one, uh, the Eclipse, which is I think a brand of, to uh, uh, of Ultra Pros. Those are my sleeves. I get them for Yu-Gi-Oh! And I get them for Magic Gathering. Yu-Gi-Oh! is different size, which is Japanese size. Magic Gathering standard size, which is a little bit bigger. You have to buy 10 of each sleeve. Depending on your location, I would do 10 of each color. And that's the bare bones minimum, by the way. I mean, realistically speaking, you really want to buy a case of all this. So you don't have to reorder sleeves by the fucking the long row. It's a pain in the ass. But when you're first starting, this is fine to do. Deck boxes, you get a $2.50 deck. You go deck box sell for $2.50. They cost you about... I can't say the price, but they're cheap, the Ultra Pro deck boxes. Uh, and then from there, you can get animated deck boxes, because Yu-Gi-Oh! players love the fucking animated deck boxes like fucking nobody's business. Magic Gathering players do not get deck boxes for the software from Magic Gathering players. They either want the Ultra Pros, or they want the Tower deck boxes, or any variants of the Ultimate Guard ones, because Ultimate Guard are some really nice stuff. The flipping trays. They, Magic players love that shit. Magic players love bling in that aspect. Yu-Gi-Oh! players bling is a little bit different. Uh, Pokemon's a little bit in between, by the way. Um, and that's, you know, that's the thing you gotta know. And you gotta go to your local card store, and you gotta gauge your card shop. Go to your card store sometimes, sit down and relax, and just view what the card store owner is doing. View what the players are buying. And to keep a mental note, say, what are they buying? Why would they buy that? Why are they buying Ultimate Guard? Why is he buying KMCs? You have to know this, because <clears throat> if you want to open a card store, if you want to work in a card store, you gotta know to sell to the player base. You gotta know that Yu-Gi-Oh players, depending on what, the, uh, what, what tournament they're going to, will equal, about, uh, the, will equal depending on what sleeves they mostly want to buy. Imagine places are the same exact thing they're no different and you gotta know what to sell how to sell it and you don't really gotta force it to sell you just give them your opinion you say hey man this is a kmc's they're a little bit slippery the corners kind of the corners uh, at the wild they, they get that little bend on them but they are one of the highest highest selling sleeves these are ultimate guards they're a new company i believe they're i i, I always tell my customers because i really don't know i think they're a german company but they're new new brand of sleeves under the scene and they have a lot of good stuff new quality really cool stuff and some cool textures on the sleeves kind of they have a matte finish and they also have a a clear finish and they got ultra pros ultra pros i just always say to everybody ultra pros mcdonald's everyone has mcdonald's nobody does not have mcdonald's everyone knows what mcdonald's is everyone has it so if you want some mcdonald's sleeves bro i got them right here for you five dollars my man done 
That's why I break down stage for everybody. It takes two seconds, and, and even though it's not like a long thing, even because I was just going back, babbling back and forth, it really isn't. And people like this. People like that. They like to, they like to go, okay, cool. Then they can step back. They already know the color they want in their head, and just, boom, pick it. It's very easy as far as that, but you got to know how to sell it. You got to know how much you got to get. And like I said, you got to get a lot of it. Another thing you always want to have is, uh, is capital always on it. Cash. You want to have cash on hand. As a store owner, I, I want to like to open my sh open my st open my shop with about a thousand dollars in my pocket. I hate opening my shop, and I have done it at times with a couple of maybe like fifty bucks in my pocket. Because people are gonna walk in and they're gonna want to sell you cards, and people will love cash. Cash is king. Now you can always say, hey, listen, come back later on. I'll get, some, I'll get some more cash, or come back later on tonight. I'll have some more cash for you. But realistically speaking, someone comes home with a collection. That's a two thousand dollar collection. I have to take my thousand dollars, slap it in their hand, and go, "How you have a good day? I'm I'm buying this now." I would love to have the ability to do that. Um, I'm trying to think what other information there is. I, like I said, this is more introduction, inter introduction, um, with me, your boy, MCTOVS, and evidently a ghost. Um, and, and, and like, if you guys have any questions, please comment questions below. I'm gonna keep doing more of these videos. Um, you know, talk about things like like applying for FDIN. It's really easy. A federal, uh, FDIN, EIN actually, but it's FDIN. Whatever. Anyway, employment identification number. Every store business needs an employment identification number, and you need to apply for one. You can literally submit your application line. It takes two minutes. By the time the application is done, you'll be given an EIN number. You can either print or the mail. You forgot which one it was. I think I print the mines. I have it in a folder, something similar to. Similar to this, every year I, I buy a new one of these folders, and anytime, I, anytime I buy for my business, any purchase I make for my business, any paperwork I pay for my business, taxation forms I pay for my business, it goes in this folder. I highly recommend to do this every year, so when your accountant comes, um, you just hear, you go, here's everything. If you have any questions, let me know, and the accountant will just sort you out. Just, it makes the world a thousand times easier. Obviously, you have a ton of questions. You want to answer them as best as possible. You know, you're only in card store, and IRS doesn't really count every nickel and penny, but realize you want to have everything as organized as possible. Another thing you want to do is open up an LLC if you want to open up your company. That's what I'm opening. LLC is amazing, and, it's, and, it's, and there's, there's other perks of other versions of it, but here's what I learned from LLC. I could be wrong, by the way, but this is what I learned by Googling and asking around. LLC is a limited liability company. LLC is a business in which I could actually, if I want, my brother wants, out of nowhere, says, Lewis, I want to buy part of your business. I want to work with you, my brother. And I go, okay, cool. Come on in, man. Give me give me X amount of money, and I'll put you in an LLC. I give him a percentage of the company based on what is the LLC, which I think was really cool. That's one. Two, LLC is a limited liability company. If my company goes down, if my company goes under, my company owes billions of dollars, my company will be affected. My EIN will be affected. I will not be affected. I will not be bankrupt. My company will be bankrupt. Another cool thing about EIN. A, a, a limited liability company. Let's say there's another car shop in your area, and the car shop, it's not doing so good. And you walk up to the car shop owner and go, "Hey, hey, Frank, see your lights are on today, buddy. I'll tell you what, today's your lucky day. I'll buy your business right now for you, and I'll give you X amount of money for this business." Realistically speaking, you're not buying Frank. You're not buying uh, the location if it's a nearby location. You're buying that company name and you're buying all its assets. You take the assets, you you, you bring them to your store, you put what you want to sell. The rest of you either throw in storage, you sell online, whatever you want to do with it. The name you add under your little limited liability company. So instead of only two names under a sole proprietorship, on the limited liability company, you absorb Frank's name. Now let's say your name is Insomni Games and Frank's name is Frank's Card Games. And you go, you know what? I don't like Frank's Card Games. I'm going to absorb it. Now, Insomni Games and Frank's Card Games is really known as Insomni Games, which is the parent company. Frank's Card Game is a subsidiary company. Let's say, you, you know what? Frank's, Frank's Card Shop was a long, long ways away. And, and you bought his card store. And Frank was, he's, he died. And you bought it from his son. And his son said, hey, give me 20 bucks on a hot dog. And he said, here you go. Catch up. Sure. Boom. You now take Frank's, Inso the Frank's, Frank's Games. You flip it to Insomni Games. Done. As far as taxation will go, everything will go under Insomni Games. Anything that happens on Frank's store, and your store will be considered two separate, separate stores for taxation purposes, but it'll be all under Insomnia Games. So hopefully that helps you out as far as that, guys. Um, this is the form. It, it's not really that long. Once you, once you, uh, it's some form you get for Kentucky, by the way. Every state has a different limit, uh, a different, um, Articles of organization. Articles of organization are also very important. You want to say that paperwork. You want to make a copy of that paperwork. And then you got to fax it out when you go to the distributors. You also got to get something known as a, you know, I'll talk about that later on. We'll talk about distributors in another video, guys. I just want to break, mood you in here. I want to get you in the card store. If 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 I had to do it all over again, I would change a lot, but I would still own a card store. That's because me. That's me, what I want.
I'm telling you right now, a lot of people that want to own car stores don't know what the hell they want. They really don't. I'm going to be real with you guys. Uh, car stores are very hard, very stressful, and I'll probably do a video on stress alone. I'll be my venting video uh, about the stressful stressful ways of owning a card store. But guys, I, I enjoy this work. I can't do nothing else besides working home online. I make good money working home online. I just like doing a card store. It's my business. It's my passion. So that's why I like doing that, guys. And um, you, you know, it, it's it's something that, like I said, not, it's not for everybody. Um, and 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 I'm gonna do, do more videos when my console is fully open and fully everything is fully lit up. I'll do some videos so you guys can see the, the things I go through, some good, some bad, some things you might want to extra the video because it looks really boring, and crappy because it is. But that's what you have to do. You have to you have to take cardboard and turn it into cash and take cash and throw it back into the cardboard. It just is what it is, guys. And hopefully, you guys can understand and appreciate that. And and like I said, guys, it, it, it's. Owning a card store is something that's not very easy. Owning a card store is 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 a, is a job. It really is a job. You don't you don't. I mean, I I do giggle a little bit when I grab my backpack. I go look at my wife and I go, I gotta go to work today, honey. It's filled with trading cards. I I giggle. I, I ain't gonna lie. But when I get to the card store, I don't sit down with the boys, flip the lights on, and play trading cards. I don't have time for that. I have time to take that backpack, throw it behind the counter. If I'm lucky and I get some time, I'll play a game or two. I'll pick me up, I'll pick me up a game if I'm lucky. But mostly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, turn everything on. I'm gonna clean this damn store up because every motherfucker leaves their drink right there at the table, and I gotta go store cards. I gotta put cards on a showcase. I gotta crack open new uh, singles for everybody, that, especially with the new set. You gotta crack open a lot of singles. I'll explain that in another video, guys. Like I said, it's a lot, and hopefully you guys can understand that. And and. I know I'm missing a ton of things. I'm just giving you a, just a synapse of the introductory to uh, to owning a card store. Just 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 an introductory because there's way more that goes into it, guys. And I know I'm babbling. I'm going over. And if you have any questions, like I said, please comment them. And I'll try to if I can uh, if I can mention them next video or I'll answer them in the comments. I vice first, whatever it is. But I'll try to get you answering questions as much as possible because I know a lot of people I talk to constantly want to open a card store. People that come to my shop all the time go, man, I I wish I could own a card store. R really? Do you know how to own a card store? Because I wish I could be Hugh Hefner, but I don't know nothing about running a Playboy Corporation. I just want to bang hookers, you know, hot chicks all day long, legal hookers. That's all I want to do, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't do that all day long. Maybe a good majority of the day, but not all day long. And owning card stores like that, you're Hugh Hefner of trading cards. Except you're not going to be playing cards all day long. You're going to be selling cards. You're going to be, you're going to be uh, picking off thongs for the hooker to wear as some nice man, gentleman, who might be gay or not, who knows, it's porn, uh, bangs her, and you just sit there going, cut, <laughs> you know, that's what you do so hopefully you guys can understand that aspect and like i said i'll try to make the video show as possible but it evidently went long guys if you have any questions please let me know i'm, I'm gonna be doing more of these videos probably uh to let you guys know what you need to do and if you anything you want to say about car stores please comment them below guys this is my take out it every car shop shop owner is different there's other car shop owners might say something that's 100 percent different than mine so that's fine i'm just letting you know what my take it is to get me where I am to open my car shop and run my uh, run my business, guys, because it is a full time business. Even though I kind of do a part time, because I'm really I'm really bad at work, but that's another subject for another day, guys. You have a great day.